Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy Ogden and I'm an illustrator based in North Wales. I hope that you enjoy this video. I'm just about to film the studio tour and show you around my creative space. So I hope you like it and yeah, I'll speak to you soon. So I thought that it would probably be best to start at the desk area because that's where most of the work happens. This is an IKEA desk and an IKEA chair and an IKEA bin underneath. Um, but I'm not sure of the names of anything so I can't really tell you for you to be able to go and look but I hope that you can tell from the video to kind of give you an idea. Um, that one has a shelf on it so it helps with storage. This is the computer that my dad built for me and then this monitor stand is also from Ikea. I think these are Alex drawers but I'm not going to go through all of them. I will show you some of them to give you an idea of what I've got for my um, art supplies. So in the first drawer I've got my watercolours, my inks, some pastels and some crayons, some acrylic markers, a backup USB and what else? Some rubbers, sharpener and more ink for drawing. In the second one, it might look like a chaotic mess to you but for me it's an organised mess so I don't know if that's much better but yeah this is mainly just more so craft things and palettes and yeah so here I've got pom-poms to make my zebra pom-pom cards. I've got glue to make my match the mini beast boxes, my staplers here and this tub of what would have been chocolates which I don't actually like I just mainly keep tins for storage um, I've got some more what you call it tubes of paint in here and then at the back I've got charcoal I've got some more charcoal pencils and that kind of craft tape that you use, the one that you wet to stretch watercolour paper. So that's that drawer. And then in this one, I've got printer stuff, some of the inks, the manuals, a backup hard drive, and what's this? Clay and the clay tools for a new project that I'm working on. Moving on to the top of the desk, I've got some acrylic palettes there. One of them is going to be for the clay project and then another one will be for the um, acrylic and gouache paints that I've got. And then moving across to this side, I've got my light pad, my laptop and my bullet journal. And then for my paint pots, not my paint pots, my paintbrush pots and the water pot, this is basically just one of those um, sauce jars which we washed out after using it and these two pots are from charity shops and then that one is just a gravy tin um, and then I always have some kitchen roll at the back there, some of the thick ones so that I can clean my pen properly once I've used the ink with it 
Normally this isn't full of water because I don't like to leave it full of water near the computer. It's just because after this video I'm going to be doing some more painting. Above that I have this cork board and this is actually from the range and I think it was about $6.99 or $7.99. Um, yeah, it's not the best quality but it'll do for what I need it for and I'm hoping to change this at some point to be able to make it into a kind of mood board for the storybook project that I've got um, that I'm going to be working on next. And then moving across to here I've got my small whiteboard and it's just here to kind of remind me of my goals for the month and things that I need to work towards and always in front of me when I'm working I always have this colour wheel to help me when choosing colour palettes and um, yeah mainly just for that reason and also reminding myself of complementary and contrasting colours. On this side we have this bookshelf which did used to be on the other side of the room but we moved it over here. So it's got some of my packaging supplies, my snake plant called Barry Junior and some tape, so this shelf, um, these shelves have children's books on them and my notebooks and sketchbooks, my Cricut machine which I still need to try and fix and over here I've got tissue paper for when I pack um, any orders of my children's book or match the mini beasts. Underneath the tissue paper I have this storage box which I got from Hobbycraft. I think it was about £4 and I use this to store my stickers and you can have a sneak peek at some of the new stickers that are coming. One of them is this Derpy Pigeon which I'm pretty pleased with. Underneath those things I just have some of the A4 printing paper and sticker paper. And underneath that I have um, how-to books, I've got my mini sketchbooks, cardstock and my Caran d'Ache um, water-soluble crayons and pencils and then on the very bottom shelf I have my children's book Little Honeybee with some more paper stacked on top of it for another project which I want to work on soon. And then down the side of the blue drawers and in between the bamboo shelf I have that card stand and I got that one from Amazon so you can get there's plenty of choices on Amazon to get card stands and I got that for the craft market coming up on the 3rd of October. So moving over to the big blue drawers they are probably one of my favourite pieces of furniture in here. These I got from eBay and in the top drawer I just have prints from illustrators that I have bought things from from Etsy and just haven't been able to put them up yet. I keep somehow buying the wrong sized frames so yes that's not very fun or good. Um, I've got backing board for any prints that I sell and I've got my Cricut mats in here and some cello sleeves and then I've got I think it's like a meter long ruler, one of those metal ones. And what else have I got in here? In here is my A2 paper for printing and some more backing board, so that's A4. And then in this drawer I keep my wrapping papers and more backing board and more cello sleeves. So these are all ready to be photographed. I've laid them out flat so that they're ready to go for the product photography. And then the bottom drawers I think just have match the mini beasts stuff in them and some random bits that need sorting. Um, but on top of the drawers I have these picture frames which I got from Hobbycraft. This was a seconds print because the border was too big and I did try and put it in the frame so that it would be even all around but as you can probably see very slightly in the corner the tape fell down from the back of it so and yeah I'm just gonna leave that I'm not bothered about it everything in this room is pretty much wonky anyway um I've got my cutting mat here and one of those 
canvas stands. I'm really sorry. It's an, it's an easel, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that's there. And then the other day we hung up these curtains while well, Kevin and his dad did. Don't worry, it's not a spider in the corner up there. It's just a little hole in the corner. Um, I got these curtains from the range. I think they were about $7.99 per panel. But I think they go really well in here. So next to the blue drawers here, I have a paper bin. And this is from Ikea and it actually has a handle on it. So it just makes it 10 times easier to take it out to the recycling bin. So that's where all the paper rubbish goes. And then I've got my physical portfolio here. And next to it, I have this set of drawers. And I got this set of drawers from Facebook Marketplace. So I would definitely recommend looking at secondhand items for storage for your studio space or your creative space because it can work out 10 times cheaper and if you don't like the colour then you can always sand and varnish it or you can paint it to fit um, the colour scheme of your home. But this is basically my packaging table and it's where I take photos of my new products because it's in front of the window. So in here I've got my hardback envelopes, twine and some bubble wrap for packaging orders and my washi tape, some stamps and all my business cards. Yeah, so that's that first one. Everything is a lot more organised than what it used to be. Let's try and close that. Second drawer is just full of envelopes and these mailing boxes which work out the size of large letters and then I've also got um, tissue paper, cello sleeves and I also keep any tissue paper that comes from anything that I order so that I can reuse it. In the last drawer there's just mailing tubes and more bubble wrap and I've kept a lot of the bubble wrap and this recyclable paper to package my um, new pocket mirrors in which I don't think I've actually shown on this channel yet so I'll show you in next week's studio vlog. Next to those drawers I have my boards from new designers from when I was exhibiting my work and one of these mount boards from the range as a backdrop for some of my product photography and then from Ikea, they had a bunch of countertops and tabletops going for free outside and this one just has a slight mark on the back of it here. So we picked that one up because we were actually looking for a new table anyway because I wanted one to go in front of the window but with everything how it's laid out now I don't need one. But because we've got this tabletop I can easily remove this back piece and lay this across the top as a backdrop for any photos that I want to take for my product. So that's just staying here for now and I thought that that was a bargain, that was really good to be able to get that for free instead of having to pay for it. So moving on to the shelving unit from Ikea, on the bottom shelf I have an Epso Epson, <laughs> what? Epson Eco Tank printer. And so far it's okay, it just seems to be printing the colours out darker than what they actually are. Which I'm not sure why it's doing that because all of my work is always set to CMYK, not RGB. So I'm not sure why it comes out differently than what I see on screen. If anyone has any tips on that, please let me know. I have more cardboard mailing boxes underneath and more kitchen roll at the back for any time which I run out of the one on my desk for cleaning my pen and then at the side I have those big plastic um, portfolio things for old work and bigger sheets of paper. Moving on to the next shelf has my scanner and then above that I have my wrapping paper rolls um, and some sheets of folded ready to go and then I've got my notelet sets these are all ready to go, I just need to pick them out and put some twine around them. I've got a tub full of envelopes and a tub full of my cards, here's one of the new designs, and more cards and then moving up here I've got more cards and match the mini beasts. On the top shelf I've got A3 mailing hardback mailers, 
envelopes, not mailers, hardback envelopes with some A3 paper for printing and over there I've got those tote bags which I showed in a previous studio vlog which I'm going to be working on hopefully next week if I can get the Cricut working. So on this side of the room next to the IKEA shelves, not in the right size frames mind but still, I have some really pretty prints from some illustrators whose work I really love. So I will link their Instagrams in the description box for you to go and check out their work. Over here I have Barry, he's currently on a box and he has two new leaves growing and this is his most recent one which is good. But I would like to get a filing cabinet to go here to put all of the receipts and businessy type papers because currently they're dotted about in different files and boxes and I would like to keep them in one place. So that's my next goal of something to find. I have a big picture frame um, down there from Hobbycraft and for A2 prints, even though it says it fits A2, the mount is too big so yeah I don't trust that sizing and I haven't opened that yet. Over here is my other Epson printer, this one is the A2 one. I'm not going to recommend it because it's not um, doing very well at the moment. But underneath it I had to get some MDF board to support the weight of the printer so that it wouldn't dip the drawers and this was about £8 from B&Q and it pretty much fits this um, the top of these drawers perfectly so that's pretty good. I got these drawers from the British Heart Foundation for £15 and we painted over them with white chalk paint, waxed it and got some new handles from Amazon and now it fits the studio space perfectly. It is possible to get good furniture for your creative space at a low price you don't have to it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg and it can look really nice after you give it a little bit of a spruce up so yeah i'm really happy with how they turned out i hope you enjoyed watching the studio tour and i hope it gave you some inspiration for your own creative space i like watching studio tours because they inspire me and yeah this is just a temporary space right now because this is actually the spare room in my in-laws house and over the past month we've been doing this room up and I do feel really lucky and really blessed to be able to call this um, a room that is dedicated just to me being create, just for me to be creative. I know that I am really blessed with that. Um, I always used to just have to work at my parents kitchen table throughout university and A levels and GCSEs. Um, yeah, it used to be a case of taking the artwork on and off the table constantly for meals and um, for other things but yeah I know that I'm really lucky to have this space now and I'm really lucky that it has grown and that I know that I'm so blessed with this so I hope that you enjoyed the video and I am currently watching Zero climb something he shouldn't be climbing. Great. Come here you. Never mind. Anyway I will speak to you soon and I'll catch you in the next studio vlog.